Hi, my name is Annika Wiklund Englund. I will talk to you about the Naturkraft project, Empowered by Nature, and the title is Bringing Families Back to Nature, a concept design project for health, nature connectedness and sustainability. The project aim is to strengthen habits that are beneficial for health and give families increased opportunities to meet everyday challenges by providing them with new ways of being active together in nature. We're designing a new concept that provides low threshold activities for families with small children. It strengthens the functioning of families and it's based on health promotion theory, principles of participation and human-centered design. Being in nature improves almost everything in our lives. For instance, communication where children in families benefit the most. It also increases their self-regulation, self-efficacy their agency, their resilience, stress balance, the, the risk evaluation, collaboration and empathy, to name a few. Nature strengthens our sense of coherence. Being in nature increases nature connectedness, and this is something we want in the project. It increases our empathic ability towards nature as well. Those who feel connected to nature protects nature. Research has been involved before, during and after. And uh, before we had uh, surveys to learn about the needs and wishes of the target group to be able to focus its design on these. We have had during as a human-centered design process to involve the target group throughout the design to test and iterate based on their experiences of the concept. And we also have involved um, design-based research after to measure effects of the concept on the target group. The project phases during these three years started with a pre-study in the Finland-Swedish region as well as a literature review. The survey was analyzed in order to identify the problems families experience to go out in nature. We did benchmarking both globally and nationally in order to learn what others did to bring families with small children into nature, but also to build a network to collaborate with. Another large questionnaire was conducted on a national level to learn more about the situation in Finland on a broader level. Then we started the process of co-creating with families. We organized small events in nature in which families could experience activities and give feedback on the concept. Before, material production has been a large part of our work, as well as the social media strategy to start up local groups and share information. We are still developing material for inspirational activities, but are now focusing a lot on educating volunteers about the concept and learning about their needs for leading groups. Finally, one of the most important parts of the project will be to create a supportive system for these volunteers. In the first survey, the qualitative answer gave insight into the problems parents experienced. For instance, coordinating uh, families, the structure and routines, inspiration, or other kind of negative perceptions. Also in the larger national survey, you can see that time is a major factor which parents see as the reason why they don't visit nature more often with the family. All of this is something we believe that we can use in the design in order to support, but also to perhaps change attitudes. We have based the design of the Naturkraft concept on the sense of coherence theory in addition to research. From a design perspective, we have used the concept of manageability, comprehensibility and meaningfulness as guides for how to cater for the needs of families. For instance, in order to make manageable, we have focused on low threshold activities and events, accessible independent activities, supportive network and local groups, as well as supportive routines and rituals. In order to make it comprehensible, we have focused on familiarity and safety, knowing what to do and accessible information. In order to make it meaningful, we have focused on finding out what creates added value to families, positive experiences and relationships, inspiring and flexible activities, as well as storytelling. We broke down categories of activities into these four dimensions based on sense of coherence theory which we used as a frame of reference in every design choice we made. The categories of activities of the Naturkraft concept for group events are welcoming activities, activities for activating and for creating presence and connection, a picnic, and finally a reflective activity to conclude and discuss and plan ahead. Then the pandemic hit. 
Due to the COVID situation, we had to adjust how the Naturkraft concept is carried out. Instead of group activities, emphasis has been placed on how we can support families to go out in nature on their own, since group gatherings have been discouraged. Open pop-up events and creating self-paced material for activities are such examples, but also continued facilitation of online participation and sharing of ideas. We were lucky in the sense that we had already built a rather comprehensive social media presence, which allowed us to continue to build the network. We also developed a Moodle online course, which stand on its own to educate volunteers about the concept. Our social media channels are used with a specific agenda to increase their added value. For instance, our Facebook page is used as a channel for marketing materials and local events, as well as for having close local groups in which parents can find each other and share, plan and gather. Instagram is our channel to share inspirational posts about activities. Here we also use IGTV as a container for short videos describing low threshold activities. Twitter is our channel for facts research about nature, collaborative partners, etc. YouTube is our server to keep a playlist of lectures about Naturkraft, especially intended for volunteers. For this purpose, we also have a podcast on SoundCloud to share information, interviews, etc. Moodle is our learning platform. We have used uh, Padlet to display our own events on a map. We have also explored how we can use Google Maps to spread information about nature spot and nature trails. And of course, we have a website which binds everything together as well as a platform for signing up for training courses and events, especially for those who do not use social media. In order to design material and events which are meaningful, we have used storytelling. For instance, we have used local stories which are connected to nature activities and playing, but we have also written new fairy tales which we have designed to be interactive and inspire families to become engaged and part of the fictive story. The fairy tales that we have written are based on theories such as positive psychology and character strength, mentalization and narrative thinking. The fairy trails are based on seasonal activities. In Finland, we have four seasons, and therefore we have, for instance, written four stories about a professor, Vilda Vide, who solved mysteries in nature. These are broadcast as a podcast on Yle, the national broadcasting company of Finland, and hence we reach a much larger audience. Collaboration is key. We have also created flyers, which are distributed through our website and Facebook group for volunteers. The flyers include a shortened text of the story, instructions for activities, as well as a QR code to access each chapter of the story. The fairy trails all have 10 chapters with a flyer for each. The one you see here on the slide is about a bunny who goes into the forest to prove that she is big enough to explore on her own and prove to her family that she is no longer just a tiny bunny baby. The aim of the fairy trail is to strengthen the family and the individual through creative play and dialogue to experience nature in multiple ways for increased nature connection. It is also about the right of public access, which is unique to Finland and the other Nordic countries. This includes learning about our own responsibilities for nature through the actions of fairy tale characters. We write the fairy tales so that the story in itself, together with the interactive nature explorations, support children's self-awareness, empathy, cognitive development, social interaction and resilience. Here is another example of Naturkraft material, which is designed as flyers to create imaginary activity rooms in nature, based on different themes, such as the playground, the gym, the art studio, the laboratory, the living room and the dining room. Because of the pandemic, we have faced some problems to collect data about the effects of the Naturkraft concept with regard to group activities. However, we are part of a study conducted by Umeå University in Sweden and the Nature Resource Center in Finland, among others, who are conducting a study in Sweden and Finland about effects of nature. While group activities were still allowed, we managed to collect data from nine parents. ECG was measured during the nature visits, as well as three days before and after. These data are then compared to a mood survey, which they also filled out during all of these days. What you see on the slide is a screenshot from the app that the parents themselves could download to their smartphone and follow their own measures. 
We're also working closely with teacher trainers and researchers of early childhood education and care who are interested in how nature activities such as those of Naturkraft can increase resilience in both staff and children at daycare centers. Here we will be investigating experiences of fair trace, for instance. The funding for our Naturkraft project will end June 2022 and we are now in the process of brainstorming how we want to continue with both implementation and research. For more information, please feel free to contact me at any time on my email address or you can go into at Naturfolkhälsan, Folkhälsan, and just uh, be part of our network. You are so welcome.